Good morning, everyone. My name is Caroline, and welcome to the Oblate Morning Prayer today. We'll begin this time of reflection by allowing ourselves to become aware of the presence of God wherever we are and in whatever we are doing. I'd like to invite you to breathe deeply, right down into the bottom of your lungs to become aware of the presence of God within and around you and in the experience of this moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, as we become more aware of your presence with, with us, we offer you our whole selves, thought, word, and deed. We come to you with thankful hearts, thankful for this day, for the grace and peace which comes from resting in the Spirit of God. We thank you for the growth of ourselves and our communities, for the places where our faith flourishes, and for the steadfastness of those who have gone before us, proclaiming the name of Jesus. Today's reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, as is fitting, because your faith flourishes ever more, and the love of every one of you for one another grows ever greater. Accordingly, we ourselves boast of you in the churches of God regarding your endurance and faith in all your persecutions and the afflictions you endure. This is evidence of the just judgment of God, so that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. We always pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, in accord with the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. Today is the feast of John Kemble, one of the 40 English martyrs. It is a name which holds a place in my heart for two reasons. When I first moved from primary to secondary school, all the forms were named after English martyrs, and my form was one Kemble, where I remained for two years. The second reason is rather more current. John Kemble was a Catholic priest who was born on a farm in Herefordshire, and he went on to serve as an itinerant priest in Monmouthshire for 50 years until his execution at the age of 80 on the 22nd of August, 1679. I returned from staying in Herefordshire and visiting Monmouthshire yesterday. The twofold connection and the coincidence of being asked to offer a reflection on his feast day was too much for me to overlook. Herefordshire is a beautiful place, which I've come to know well since my youngest child has lived and worked there for the last six years. Monmouthshire I visited this weekend for the first time. It is just next door to Herefordshire, over the border in Wales, and both counties boast rolling green hills and lush valleys. They are places where crops and fruit grow in abundance. They are also out-of-the-way places, challenging to get to and somewhat cut off from the bustle of the world. Not much is known about John Kemble's 50-year ministry to the people of Monmouthshire and Herefordshire. But we do know he served at a time when the persecution of Catholics was widespread and their ability to practice was dependent on the sympathies of local landowners. Despite this, it seems, John was admired by all sides and had good relationships locally, being left to practice his faith and serve his people largely in peace for most of his life. As Paul's letter to the Thessalonians states, it seems that John Kemble's faith both endured and flourished into love for all the people he served, 
despite the persecution and oppression of the times. I wonder, did he not often turn to exactly this piece of scripture from time to time, to receive encouragement from previous generations whose faith had endured through persecution? He was arrested aged 80, having been accused of taking part in a plot against the king. The plot was found to have no foundation, and he was cleared of this offence. However, these events brought his activities as a serving priest to the attention of the authorities, and he was sentenced to death for being a Catholic priest. His isolation and good relations with local people were not enough to save him. His executioner cried while he carried out his duties and allowed Campbell to die on the gallows instead of enduring his full sentence of being hung, drawn and quartered. Campbell was praised as a great man by Catholic and Protestant alike and mourned by all who knew him. It is because of the flourishing faith of the men and women of Thessalonica, men and women like John Campbell, the faithful of 16th and 17th century England, because of the faithfulness of preceding generations that our faith flourishes. Without them and people like them who have passed faith on through the generations, my life would be much poorer. We all stand on the shoulders of our ancestors and extend a hand to the generations to come. Father God, in the midst of our day we pause and we remember all those whose flourishing faith has been vital for us. The people we know, our spiritual mothers and fathers who have birthed and nurtured us in faith. The saints who have gone before. We give thanks for the endurance and flourishing faith of those who respond to the call of God in their lives. We pray for the protection of all those who are persecuted for their faith today those whose calling takes them across the world to lands where they are physically in danger for speaking the name of Jesus or possessing a Bible. We pray for people of faith in this country who are ridiculed in the street for looking different, feared for their perceived association with extremists, for those whose faith is misunderstood in a secular society, for those whose faith alienates them from family and friends. And we pray that God would bring powerfully to fulfilment every good purpose and every effort of faith. And we ask this in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. Have a blessed day.